Well, I think I found a pretty cool use for my new M4 Mac Mini. I've been accessing my Mac Mini remotely through my iPad Pro, and it's actually pretty snazzy. It's pretty much like having two operating systems in one device. I have all my iPad apps and functionality, but I can just as easily switch over to Mac OS when I really need it. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and I purchased my M4 Mac Mini about a month ago, and I was really having trouble figuring out how to use it well. I'm a heavy-duty iPad user, but I wanted that M4 Mac Mini so I could get access to a desktop browser when I needed it. But honestly, I found myself just moving the Mac Mini out of the way and working on my iPad. And I posted a video about my experience with the M4 Mac Mini so far. Put that up on the channel a few days ago, and man, was it polarizing. So some people really loved that video, but others really hated it. And I got all kinds of feedback on that video, which I'm actually thankful that I got because the negative feedback actually taught me some things about the Mac Mini and how how to use it. So I was reading through the comments, a lot of folks said, hey Tech Dad, this is how you use an M4 Mac Mini effectively, and one of the most common use cases was accessing a Mac Mini remotely. So a lot of guys will just buy a Mac Mini, set it up, and then just put it in a closet or on a shelf somewhere and access it remotely through another device. So if you have an iPad Pro or even a PC laptop, but you want access to the Mac operating system, the Mac Mini is a cheap way to get access to it. Cheaper than a MacBook Air even, and you can just remote desktop in when you need it and you have full functionality of a Mac. And I thought that was pretty cool, so I thought I would listen to the comments and give it a try. So in this video, I wanna talk about my experience on how it's been accessing my Mac Mini remotely through my iPad Pro. I wanna talk about the positives of that experience and the negatives because there are some things that aren't working right. And this video is not sponsored content. I did not get paid to talk about any of the apps in this video. I literally just went off the recommendations in the comments. So with that said, let's get into it. All right, first, let's talk about these setups and the positives of using this remote desktop setup. So the comments recommended that you use an app called Jump Desktop, and I checked this app out on the App Store. It was 15 bucks, one-time purchase, no subscription, so I thought, eh, 15 bucks, worth a shot. Setup was really easy, you just install the app on your iPad, and then you install the setup software on your Mac. And setup was pretty easy once you give a whole bunch of permissions on your Mac to actually use the app. You can then just log in with an email account, I just logged in with my Google account on both devices, and boom, it automatically set up, and I can access my computer. And the app delivers as promised, I can access my Mac Mini right from my iPad. I do get that desktop browser experience, I tested it with a few different applications on the web. So the main reason I bought my Mac Mini was actually to get access to my D&D materials, which work best on a desktop browser, and that works just fine. I could access it remotely, easy peasy. I also use Smartsheet at work, and this application does not work well on the iPad browser, but works great on desktop, and I could access that also, and even keyboard shortcuts work, so I was actually really happy that I could copy and paste very easily, even remotely. Very cool. What's really cool is I could connect my iPad to a secondary display, and it worked even better, so I could connect to my Apple Studio display and then open Jump Desktop and my Mac displayed beautifully. It was actually really awesome. And what was really cool is I could get access to both operating systems at the same time. You could have your Mac up on one screen and have your iPad up on the other screen. It's actually pretty cool. I also tested this with connecting to other Wi-Fi. So I connected my iPad to my phone hotspot and I really couldn't tell a difference in performance. Connection was still very good. Not any real issue there being on another network. I'm gonna take my iPad out to the coffee shop and give it a go there and just see if the connection is just as good. Now I also really like this setup because it gets rid of the extra hardware that I found to be a real pain in the rear that was sitting on my desk all the time. So I had this mouse and keyboard for use for my Mac Mini and I found it to just be in the way all the time. And now I don't need it. I can just put my Mac Mini on the corner of the desk, put this stuff away, and then access my Mac through my iPad, which is what I work on all of the time. So that's exactly what I was looking for. I wanted access to Mac OS when I needed it, but I didn't want to carry around a second device like a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, and I didn't want another desktop computer in the way on my desk because I always use my iPad. All right, next, let's talk about the negatives because does this process work perfectly? Uh, not really. The first complaint I have is I can't fix the resolution, even though there are clearly controls to fix the resolution. So you'll notice that when I open Jump Desktop, it doesn't take up my whole iPad display, but there are settings where you can change it, but they don't work. Nothing happens when I try to apply new settings. I've tried changing this in the Jump Desktop app on my iPad 
that and I've tried going into my Mac and changing the resolution, there's no option to change it. I don't understand. Now it does work great when I connect it to a secondary display because the resolution is set up appropriately. So I don't know if the app just needs an update. Maybe iPad OS 26 just came out and Jump Desktop is not updated. I'm not sure, but that needs fixed. The second thing is some connections don't work appropriately. So for example, if I open Discord on the Mac side of the world, it can't access my camera for some reason. I would think it would be able to access my camera from my iPad, but it's not doing it. It also can't access it even if I connect to my secondary display camera, which there is a workaround for this. I just opened Discord on the iPad side of the world. So I open that application on iPad OS. It accesses my camera just fine. I can keep that open and then I can access my Mac side of the world as well. So there are workarounds. I don't have to have it accessing my camera because my iPad can access the camera, but still it'd be nice if that would connect. The next thing is it's a little grainy, probably because of the resolution issue. I can't change the resolution. So everything just looks a little grainy and it's also a little bit laggy. It's not perfect. It's not like I'm actually working directly on the Mac mini, but it's pretty darn close for 15 bucks performance isn't too bad. I will compare it to Shadow PC. So Shadow PC is a cloud computing experience that I used to pay for. So it's a subscription service. They provide the PC for you in the cloud and the experience was top notch. It had beautiful resolution, beautiful connection. Everything worked. It could access my camera. If I plugged in a gaming mouse, it could access it, found it just fine. I'm not sure this jump desktop would give the same experience. I'll have to play around with it a little bit more. The only problem with Shadow PC was it was a subscription service and it's actually really expensive and getting more expensive. So now their cheapest plan is 38 bucks a month. I mean, that's gonna pay for a Mac mini in about a year, year and a half. So there are better remote desktop experiences than this, I think, but for the price you're paying, not too shabby. So consensus, is this worth it? For 15 bucks, yes, it's worth a shot and I actually like the workflow a lot better. And I think this is a strong use case for Mac mini. If you wanna get access to the Mac operating system, but you don't wanna carry around a second laptop with your iPad, this is a great way to do it. A Mac mini, is super powerful, very affordable, and can be tucked away on a shelf somewhere and you can just access it remotely. The headless Mac mini, I love it. And I love having everything on one device. I've got it all captured on my iPad. I can go wherever I want and access both operating systems. Pretty cool. Let me know if you have any luck with this kind of setup and if you're able to change that resolution, I would love to hear about that. Leave a comment below. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.